helping a person will not necessarily change the world, but will definitely change the world for that person. And that is the motto Umaira lives by. Developing and nurturing talent within the Emiratis is her passion. And seeing them settled and grow in a job gives Umaira her share of joy. Omera's company, Advanced Learning Formulas, aim to make her fellow community members, either graduates or those between jobs, more employable. And she works exclusively with Emiratis and only employs Emiratis. I spoke to Omera to understand her source of strength and inspiration to inspire others. I'm particularly interested in uh, knowing about your education because you did something completely different. I guess it was maybe my love of watching crime shows. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but um, something yes, good came out of this watching is it. crime you shows. You know, yeah. I, I studied criminology mm -hmm. and, and with a background in criminal justice. Okay. And whenever I say that, everybody's like, "Oh my goodness, yeah, why?" why? <laughs> you know. But it was really exciting. And uh, my bachelor's was in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and the area that I was there had a very amazing woman who was a pioneer in criminology, okay. Esther Madras. She's passed away recently, but um, she wrote a lot of books on how she believed in teaching as opposed to punishment. Mm. And I think this is something which started ingraining in me, the whole concept of teaching. So what made you come to UAE? So after I graduated in, uh, from NYU with mm -hmm. my master's in criminology, there was a lack in the market of UAE nationals doing criminology. Mm -hmm. So I came back here and I started working in various government entities, helping out in various frauds and very different like risk management departments, giving my expertise and learning from a lot of the other people who had grown up here mm -hmm. and in the background of police and these kind of things here. So it was very interesting learning from all these aspects. And I guess coming back here with that background and being a woman, I did find some challenges, but I guess you have to be a strong woman and, 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 and try to empower yourself and those around you and get you to your next step. So what were the challenges? The biggest challenge I faced, and um, thankfully I can say that it's really lacking now. But when I first came back was the concept of, are you sure as a woman you know exactly what you're saying? Mm -hmm. And those kind of things would infuriate me at that time. Absolutely. Right now I take it in stride because mm -hmm. you know I'm able to be a lot older and, and this is the thing I teach my younger students. But what happened was at that time, I used to be like, how could they say this to me? I have a master's in this. I know what I'm talking about. But I guess you really have to understand, and my father would always tell me, he would say, other than just always being angry and responding in anger, try to answer it with a joke. Or try to lighten up the mood mm -hmm. so that they can see that, okay, you did understand and you ignored the fact of what they just told you and you're carrying on with your why you're here. Coming back to your work, obviously those 10 years were very formative years yeah. for you uh, because you, though you were UAE, uh, you are in UAE national, but you never stayed here yeah. right? and you came back to your own country with your own people. It made you learn the psyche of people and a um, lot of positive as well as negatives that you, could, right. you were working with. Um, how did your company come about and how, what is the evolution that you had gone through as a woman that helped you create that you created today? So for me, what started in 2010, um, I, got, I went through a divorce and I was a single mother of three women. And I thought this couldn't be my legacy that I leave behind, just being, you know, just raising children, even though being a, being a mother is one of the most rewarding jobs. But I wanted my daughters to understand that you can just move on and work and learn and teach, you know? So I decided what was lacking in this country when I used to watch nationals being trained by very, very amazing expat trainers, but the, the nationals never seemed to click with them, mm. never seemed to feel you know, satisfied or they understood or relaxed with these. And I thought, why is that? And it's only when I realized after doing a few training sessions myself that being an Emirati, I could you know, bridge that gap and I could appeal to them because I was from them and I could understand and make them feel more relaxed and they would open up and they would say what their problems were, things that they really couldn't say to other people, which is then when I decided to create ALF, which is, stands for um, Advanced Learning Formulas. This company now is part of KHDA, it's part of Sheikh Mohammed's Interlock program where we solely focus, our main motto is by the nationals, for the nationals and of the nationals. So basically, we only hire nationals, we only train nationals, and we only work with UAE nationals. 
So some people would say, but why? Why are you, why, what about the rest of the nation? And I say, because there's amazing, amazing expat um, training, training facilities, facilities able to take care of all those. But the niche of Emiratis, it, you need to have a specialization for that. I would like to know a little more about the structure that you have in ALF. The, the main focus we have is on soft skills. Because mm -hmm. what happens is, um, it's not like the rest of the world. The UAE Nationals, God bless them, when they, when they leave high school, there's no education on working before they enter the work, work environment. So what happens is, if, whether you're living in the US or in India or anywhere, so for example, you had an allowance of $10, $10 every week and you wanted something for $20. So you would ask your parents for that and they would say, well, if you want that extra money, you're going to have to work for it. So from a young age, you understand the meaning of work right. ethics. So when these young nationals enter the workforce, they're shocked because they don't know what is required from them, what is expected of them, how will they even be able to work and provide and to just be a substantial person in that department or in that company. So it's a big, big, big problem for these young nationals. That's where we come in. We try to get them just as they graduate from high school before they even enter into university or for those who have entered university, we try to make sure before they enter the workforce that they have some sort of training examples like expertise in soft skills, learning how to do interviews, how to answer phone calls, business writing, etiquettes, these kind of things. Being an expat, I've been living here for the last 18 years. We do have a perspective towards nationals working in an organization. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a preconceived notion. Yeah. Uh, without understanding what you're telling me right now is that that's the culture that's not there at all. This is so it. obviously, uh, their perspective towards working is yeah. very, very different. It's very different. Working is very different than studying. studying. So for example, when I started working, I came with a master's degree. But my first job was to actually just follow my manager around, learn what he was doing, photocopy, fill out presentation. And at that time, I used to hate it, but today looking back, that's what built me to where I am today. So when I see nationals, because a lot of what happens is I get people from private corporations telling me, well, these nationals come in and they want straight off the bat to become managers. And we don't know what to tell them, so we send them away. Or if we have places, we'll put them there, but we don't care what happens then because, you know, we're not sure whether we want to develop them or not. So that's where we come in and we say, do not give them that job because today when they graduate, they're not ready to become managers, managers. but we will help train them to become managers. And as I said, it also teaches them work ethics to start from a very beginning because exactly. you just get to learn so much when you start at the exactly. grassroots level. And that's what builds you up because you can't start, the people that I've known who have started as managers and CEOs who have never lasted that long, even in companies when you go big right in the beginning, you never really, you have to scrap, you have to build yourself up from scratch. The trust is more when you, you are producing results yeah. and you've been doing it for years now. How many nationals have you trained so far and how many companies have you worked with? So one of the main success stories, which I always love to, and they always laugh at me for always mentioning them, is Emirates NBD. Mm -hmm. Last year alone, we trained about 800 of their UA national staff. Wow. 800. And um, they, from all aspects, so we had high school leavers, we had managers, we had higher level, so we, we, had, we tailor make programs to suit that need. Mm -hmm. And before we started training them, their attrition rate was around 55% of people leaving them within mm -hmm. the first two years, which is what you can see in the market research. Yes. It's about 55% of UA nationals in the first two years will leave their job mm -hmm. for another job. And the problem is they'll be poached for the same job poached with exactly. a bit higher salary, higher salary because most companies just want to fill their quota. Mm -hmm. The problem is now the, the, the companies are understanding the point of they keep on spending and they think, why are we doing that? So that's where we come in. Let's develop these staff for Correct. you. They will move up on the food chain. You won't need to hire more staff. You mm -hmm. will have amazing nationals working for you and building up your company with you. Because when Sheikh Mohammed meant amortization, he didn't mean numbers. He didn't mean just finding national and putting them as receptionists or as customer service and leaving them there. What he meant was develop the national. So we go in and a lot of times HR thinks, oh my goodness, we didn't think of it this way. And I said, but this is what amortization means. Yeah. Amortization is not about numbers, it's about developing the national. It's not about quantity, it's about exactly. quality. Exactly. Really making people understand that. Exactly. 
So how do you feel today? How far have you come as a woman, uh, as an entrepreneur? And where do we see you in a few years time? I'm very happy with what we've achieved so far. And the most rewarding points are when I run into my students, whether they are men and women. Um, we've got some young nationals who come up and say, you know, Ms. Amira, thanks to you, I've reached this level. Or thanks to you, you gave me the courage to open my own business. And now I'm running it and it's going really well. And we need you to just come and take a look if, you know. And it's just the proudest moments for me are these things, watching them grow because today, the national, whether it's the woman or the man, they understand that they have a choice. And that's what I try to teach my students. Life is all about choice and they need to understand that they can make their choice. Yes, they might be met with restrictions when it comes to culture or family, but you have to try to convince them in an educational way of why you've come to this choice and why you want to make this decision. And that's why we stand with them when they, when we, we find a lot of times some of them, especially the women, mm -hmm. are not allowed to go to the events, you know, because right. most events start at night. Mm, yeah. So slowly I say, instead of fighting, we have to try to convince them and change little by little. Because I always mm. say the little changes lead to big, 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 big results. Changes. Exactly. So I always tell my students, if they have a problem with you going, tell them I will go with you. And I used to go with my students. I used to go to their events. I used to, until their parents would understand, okay, if there's an older national going there, it's, it should be okay, you know? And it's sort of just getting them to understand different values and cultures. Wow, that's amazing dedication from your end. Too. Yeah, thank you. As a woman, how have you evolved through your job? Um, and I always ask this question because I have seen my evolution um, over these uh, so many years that I've been working. Uh, and I feel if I wasn't doing what I was doing, I wouldn't be the woman that I am today. Yes. Exactly. How have you evolved? For me, the biggest point of when I realized I was changing was when I became a mother. Mm. You know, as a, as a mom uh, of three young girls, mm. It was very unheard of, you know, to get up and just say, oh, that's it, I'm going to get a job. Uh, you know, I, I left my job at that time and I'm going to, should I start working? Should I open my own company? What should I do, you know? What will my daughter say when she grows up? Will she be proud of me? Will they look up and say, oh, I love what my mom did and I want to continue? So you, I guess my evolving came with being a mother and just how now I feel like all my students are my children as well. Absolutely. And of course, I, I'm remarried now, so my husband always says, stop making yourself sound so old, you know, because those, those, those students that you talk about are 20, you know, and so how, how is this possible? <laughs> I truly believe in today's day and age, we need more coaches and more teachers because uh, in every aspect of our lives, we need, do need coaching to go to that different level. And you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you. And you're really making a difference. Thank you. And I'm so honored to have you on the show. Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure and honor for me to be here. Thank you so much Thank for you. having me. Thank, Thank you. you.